Okay, when we're thinking about the universe, we probably have to make some assumptions about the nature of the universe. We know we're talking about the same kind of things. It'll become apparent later on. First off, space. Is space infinite? Probably is infinite. After all, if it isn't, what's beyond the edge of space but more space? If there's a boundary to the edge of space, what's the boundary made up of? If space is being folded in on itself, what's the energy or force doing the folding? No, space is probably infinite, but we can't tell for sure. It's likely if you were to strap a rocket onto yourself and travel an infinite amount of time, you wouldn't reach the end. You might reach a region of space where there wasn't any matter, but you'd still be in space. Okay, that's space. What about matter? Is matter infinite? It's probably either infinite or present in very large amounts. It's unlikely that our region of space is the only region that has any matter. There might be other matter that's separated by vast distances from us, but there's matter probably in other areas of space. History has taught us anything that the Earth isn't the centre of the universe, the Sun isn't the centre of the universe, the Milky Way isn't the centre of the universe. We're not particularly special as a region of space. So this region of space is probably not the only region that has any matter to it. Okay, what about Big Bang then? During a Big Bang, matter is attracted to other matter. Matter then forms a dense ball, denser than any sun or star that's collapsing on itself. This is a ball of matter, not a single point or singularity. After all, matter can't inhabit the same space as other matter. The forces just before a Big Bang are in balance, those of attraction and repulsion. The Big Bang occurs when there's too much matter pulled in. The forces holding it in can't come back, the forces pushing it out. It's like a nuclear reaction, and it's just going critical. There's just too much matter in there to hold it in. The standard model of the universe, however, the matter that's measured in the universe is missing a large amount that's needed to stop the Big Bang collapsing back in on itself when it happens. What's happened is that dark matter and dark energy has been invented to fill this gap. However, like the invention of ether in the 19th century and other flawed theories, this isn't a good way to go for science. Rather than check theories, measurements, assumptions, we invented a new particle, new energy, which doesn't react, can't be seen, can't be focused on. Just a random thought by some scientists about how to solve the problem. What should have been done is check the theories, check the assumptions, rather than invent something new. OK, so what can we do about this? Create an alternative model. OK. In an infinite amount of space, we have matter distributed fairly evenly across space. Then the matter then forms clumps. These clumps may be separated by vast distances of space, but they will continue to grow and attract more matter until they have enough matter to form a big bang of their own. These clumps could form a pattern like a crystal lattice. Each one of the atoms of the crystal lattice being separated by vast distances of space. These atoms, as we were, over billions of years, going through cycles of big bangs and big crunches, expansion and collapse. Then matter may be leaking from one universe to another, so you'd actually have a multiverse, as it were, a whole series of universes all going through expansion and contraction. This would be <coughs> a network, as I say, or a lattice of universes around space. What's the evidence for this? After all, criticised dark matter and dark energy for lack of evidence. OK, if there were other universes out there, scattered, like I say, a crystal lattice, the gravitational forces from those universes would be pulling on the edge of our universe. What would that mean? First off, then during a Big Bang, 
it isn't just purely the atoms in our universe which need to be accounted for the expansion. There's also a force pulling on the outside from each of the other neighbouring universes. So we don't need as much matter in a big bang to prevent it collapsing in on itself. Okay. The other possibility. The matter on the edge of our observable universe will be being attracted towards a neighbouring universe. And actually, the measurements of this have been seen. Matter on the edge of our universe is actually accelerating away. Only one force could be doing that is if it's been pulled somewhere. So this is it. Do we go with dark matter and dark energy? Or do we go with a the multiverse theory? Your decision.